People can contact us, sometimes anonymously, but that's not really very practical, but it's possible. But when people contact us, we first invite them for an intake, uh, a talk, to really refine what they actually want to look for. Because not everybody looks for people. A lot of people just look for information. So that is the first step. And then they, uh, we go over a very detailed consent form uh, what do you want us to look, to look for? Can we look abroad? Can we contact different people? Are you, do you agree if we do this or that? So they go through a whole uh, talk about con giving consent in what we are looking for. <clears throat> and also a privacy declaration, of course. The GDPR is a very important issue in our work. And then we support them in all the different steps that we can take. So if it's, for example, an adopted person who is looking for a file, we can contact the adoption, the, the adoption services and demand their files. They have to send it to us. Sometimes it happens that we know that it's not complete because the adoptee may have already some information and it's lacking in the files. So we have to ask again and kind of put some pressure. Uh, or we can look in the countries of origin, whether there is documentation to be found there or with ISS or different sources that we can uh, contact. So we take every step with the client and on the client's tempo. Sometimes clients, when they hear what we could do for them, they say, OK, I'm going to think about it, take a step back, maybe talk to my husband or, or consider what, what I would do. What if you find a relative? because once you find something, you cannot unknow it. So sometimes it's a bit of a Pandora's box that opens with the information that you get. With donor children, for example, it's different. Uh, we have a very small DNA database of our own, but we can only look for first degree um, affiliation, which is very limited. A lot of people ask to look for siblings or have siblings are very curious about that. But sometimes if you, for example, use the commercial DNA databases, which are, of course, very successful with millions of, of DNA samples in it, you get more information than what you asked for. For example, you may be looking for relatives and then get news that you have maybe a hereditary disease, news that you didn't want to know. So we also support people when they, when they Sometimes they ask us, let, let them send the results to you and then you kind of figure out what I want to know based on the questions that I ask. So we support them also in getting the results of different searches and also getting no results at searches. That's when they really need our support to, to make it fit into their lives that they will have to continue with this form of secret or taboo or un, unfindable information, if that's the word in English. So the support can have many shapes and forms in practical searches, but also technical interpretation of DNA results and psychosocial supports. And, and if necessary, we refer them to, to more specialized uh, care.